Hey, can you hear me? Last one was a 4FL. This is a 4BFL. A little more, a uh, little shallower. This one should sound a lot more airy. Yamaha 14F4. This is a Shilky 13F4. I think this one's my favorite. This is a Bach 2FL. I try to keep everything kind of similar in size, so like 16.5 millimeter. Uh, that's just what seems to feel right for me. And all you players out there know, swapping between lots of different size mouthpieces is, makes it a little more challenging. Bach 2FL.
ran out of air there, but I don't know, I feel like that one's most comfortable for me. Let's do some speed line. It'll be sloppy, but it's okay. <laughs> Shilky, 1040 FL, raw brass. Mm. Oh, my Tomans, hey man. This is with the four BFL. Sound horn. This thing really comes to life with like a 3C. Oh, it's just real snappy. Four FL. What the hell am I playing here? This is, yeah, these are all four. Four FL. This is the deep one. I've been waiting to record this, but check this out. Ooh, yeah. Finally got it. This is my fattest. Shoot it. Man, I really like this thing. It's probably way more horn than I can handle, but just check out the compression on this thing, right? First valve. Holy cow. That's so loud. <laughs> That's so much louder than any horn I have. Look at that, third valve. Like, it's literally difficult to close that without depressing the valve. So some of the weird things about this are unique anyway. It, you can't tell in here, but inside the caps, there's a, a heavy weight, so it weighs more. Um, also, if you noticed here, there's a screw here and a little wing nutty thing down here. So you can pull this whole bell off. They call it a tuning bell because it allows you to tune at this joint as opposed to interrupting the wind here. Where you'd, I mean, this still works, right? This tuning side, it's in there pretty good, sorry, right? There we go. So you can still pull it out, but it's most optimal if you don't. This part here is also very unique to a Shilke. It's much more narrow than the other horns I have. And when you take off this bell, holy cow, it weighs like nothing. It's like featherweight. But a really cool horn nonetheless. I mean, I love the Shilke. I love their design. It's so nice. This just feels like such an amazing horn. The strange, a little bit strange is that the, uh, the screw here for the... Uh, Tunable belt is kind of like if you play flat fingered, you know, like sloppy, you can feel that thing and it can actually get in the way. So it's designed for you to play properly on your fingertips, but really neat. And it feels, I don't know, I would, I would describe it as it feels like a small horn, like in my hand. 
it's very compact. Like I, you know, I have big fat hands, so it, that could be part of it too. But I did replace the uh, bottom lock screw because it was bent and kind of stuck in there. But man, this is quite a horn, I gotta say. I'm uh, very impressed. Now, if I can only play it. Yeah, so I, I mean, I'm probably not gonna use that 13A4A too much. That's a little zingy for the kind of playing that I do, but cool to have it. Um, I would likely stick with, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of being traditional with this one. Like I want to keep, I want just shilky stuff in it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I don't know. I, I imagine that everything like that works best, but I do have this, uh, I mean, I have like 50 mouthpieces, but I have this really nice uh, Vincent Bach Artisan one and a half C that I also, I mean, I mean, ironically, yeah, oh, there's the camera. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're not, it's pretty similar. Um, but again, I'm trying to keep everything like one, you know, about 6.5 to some degree millimeter. But here's the D one, the D again, D cup. C would be high to me, <laughs> but I think that sounds pretty good. Um, so I'll probably stick with the D4, and uh, I'll just give you a sample of the uh, the Artisan series. So Bach and Schilke, here we go. too. I guess it's all right to switch. I'm kind of in this obsessed mode with <laughs> going to play every freaking mouthpiece there is. <laughs> but look at this thing. Oh, what a joy. Just to own it. Even if I can't play it that well, it's fine. It also came with this really cool doohickey that uh, stabilizes the bell that kind of mounts on here. It looks pretty cool, but uh, I haven't used that. They're like It's like a $400 accessory. This stuff is expensive. I mean, you can tell though, it's really, really well made. That's my only complaint about the Toman is that um, otherwise I'd buy a couple of their horns too, their regular trumpets too. But I mean, when you hold an instrument like this, now granted, this is almost a $4,000 trumpet new. <laughs> so this is by no means, a, you know, just an entry level horn. But uh, like it's you know i mean i've done this with guitars too it's really unfair to compare something like that it's just there's no comparison in terms of the craftsmanship this thing is so well made it's beautiful it's like it's almost beyond i'm not worthy i'm not worthy you know that kind of thing <laughs> but whoo it's a it's a it's a joy and a privilege to own something like this so all right then we get into the real jazzy kind of stuff so this is my raw breast trumpet custom benzina i've shown this off a couple times but so i can show it like right after a shilky you, you should be able to hear the difference maybe not in the in the phone but like i was describing on the shilky like this part here is more narrow on the shilky than on the uh, bra i mean honestly this really doesn't feel that much bigger and that much heavier but i mean you know you can tell it's got the huge mouthpiece on it with this mouthpiece. I'm going to do that right now. Hang on. Not very good at these videos, huh? So this is the Shilky with this big fatty from Raw Brass Trumpets. <laughs> Bit 
know if it's symphonic, maybe. I don't know. This thing has a little bit more of a darker character, right? on this one it's still pretty good it's loud right <laughs> i think the shoki might be a little they're pretty close this has a getson valve block so it's it's a whole different feel and obviously it's, it's heavier it's got these big giant um uh, finger rings on it and uh, the bell is a little larger on this one Should, oddly enough the shoki is a five inch bell this is a five and, a, and an eighth i think so it's a little bit bigger but, you know, raw brass, I mean, it is a tank. You know, it's got red brass here on the bell. Um, there's my little Ben, the uh, Ben. <laughs> so sad that I did it. But I mean, you know, you can scream out on this thing too, right? I don't use it that way, but you can. phone is kind of you know compressing it ducking it down but it's loud as hell <laughs> kind of warmed up now pop out good notes and i'm using a big ass mouthpiece this is a uh, the bbz2 so this is i think a 17 millimeter this is a big one but it has a really nice rounded cushion rim i don't know if you can see that it's not sharp so it it kind of gradually dips in instead of just uh, or cuts under like some mouthpieces um so this thing allows you to play like easily double the amount of time so once you, you know, once your mouth gets tired it's weird because at least for me for trumpet like I hit that perfect zone and then very quickly it's almost like getting drunk right it's like you hit, get the perfect buzz and then oops one more drink and now you're fucked up <laughs> and that sucks because now it's like Rrr. so when you're playing a brass instrument you know this part of your your mouth isn't huge you know this the tiny little muscles in there they're strong and all that and have endurance but that's really what you're building up as you practice is your endurance so you can play longer because once these muscles get tired out you're done you start missing notes and it starts getting all flubby and airy because you can't maintain the embouchure is what it's called uh, because your muscles are tired it's like curling right? you can only do so many until your your arms are just like oh, i'm done i can't do it anymore but you reach that point of like yeah i'm in the zone and then all of a sudden you're like oh shit, i'm tired and i'm not in the zone anymore point being this type of a mouthpiece this cushion or wider rim lets you play well beyond and maybe that's a bad thing maybe you, should, you know you shouldn't be playing too far uh beyond and overdoing it but um, this mouthpiece these types of mouthpieces allow you to uh, comfortably comfortably and accurately play at least from my experience significantly longer than you would on a traditional mouthpiece so not only is it you know this big crazy giant mass thing which is very different right so if you've never played and i think it's really funny and i'm not trying to get into a long video but i think it's funny that you know as a little kid Growing up, and I had a wonderful band director. The guy definitely knew horns, and you know he was a, he was a primary trumpet player. Um, obviously, he could play everything else too. But we never really talked that much about mouthpieces. And holy crap, there's like ten thousand mouthpieces out there. You know, I mean, you go to Monette, and they have every size and every shape and every mass. I mean, they have probably two hundred themselves. You know, and that's one company. Then you look at all the ones from Bach and Shilke and Yamaha and, and Curry, and I mean, it's just the list goes on and on. Um, but we never really talked very much about that when we were kids, or at least I never did. I used a 3C my entire, 
I started with a seven, then I went to a five, then I went to a three by the time I was in high school, and that was it. I never moved on from mouthpieces until I became an adult and started just going researching and messing around and looking at different stuff. And now I have, you know, easily 50 mouthpieces. But I guess once you find what you need, you, you probably don't need an arsenal of mouthpieces. But again, because I don't play in a band and I'm not in a jazz ensemble or an orchestra or anything like that, I have the luxury of just sifting through things that I want to try to keep it interesting when I do recordings. So I find that what I found was that, you know, I've tried a ton of mouthpieces and I, I, again, I have a lot. So when you get a big heavy blank, a big slug blank like this, what it does is, you know, obviously the trumpet is now better balanced in this, you know, it, it will literally sit perfectly up and down like this because there's so much extra weight down here that's typically not there on a regular mouthpiece. Um, so it really effectively creates a balanced horn, um, even though traditionally what you would see in a balanced horn is a longer back end to account for that. Uh, with a regular mouthpiece, but these high mass mouthpieces do, do that. But what I've noticed, and I'm not sure what that's called, is that there's a different kind of feel, not physically to your lips, but when you're playing on the on the valves and you have a smaller mouthpiece, you can feel it. You can feel the vibrations back on your mouth. When you have a heavy piece like this, you don't feel it at all. Um, and I don't know if that's better or worse, it's just notably different. Uh, and I don't really go for any, like I was just playing all traditional mouthpieces uh, over there, but it feels like these higher mass mouthpieces definitely darken the sound. They make it, um, you probably can't hear this translating through the microphone uh, on the phone, but this horn is significantly thicker and more dense sounding than the Shilky. Um, and these are equivalent priced horns. You know, this was like 3,400 bucks new and the Shilky is about 3400 bucks new. So these are comparable in terms of quality, but super different in terms of what they're able to do and how they sound. And again, if, even if I put a, a traditional mouthpiece in this horn, it still has a bit of a, a unique sound because it's made out of different material. It's, the, you know, the dynamics and the, the geometry of this is different. Um, it's got big, big bracing on it. That affects the resonance in the bell, and I think that's probably a significant reason, other than the flare and the mouthpiece, as to why this instrument sounds very, very dense. And again, you can't really hear that through a phone, but this is the horn that you hear on, I mean, up until now, every recording I've ever done that's been released is this horn. Um, I have a few other horns, but when it comes to recording, this is just the re you know good old reliable. I just play it better, it sounds better, it records better. Um, I don't know what the deal is with it, but I mean, it's not a flugelhorn, obviously, but it really has a dark, dense sound. That said, the last couple of recordings I did, obviously I did add the shoki in there because I want to play that horn on, on some parts. Look, I'm just smiling saying it, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, that's the simple things, but I mean, this is just a beautiful instrument as well. You know, I mean, it's all handmade. Other than the valve block, I'm, I'm pretty sure the valve block comes purchased. Or, or comes, uh, you know, all the parts are on it in terms of the three valves. That's not made from scratch. That's provided by Getzen. I'm not sure if the bell is hand done by Ben or not, or if it's if it's purchased. But all this other custom work on here is really well done. I mean, it's you can't deny this is a gorgeous, gorgeous trumpet. You know, I mean, for for a guy like me to have something like this, it's again, it's I'm very fortunate. Here's a little up close. <laughs> yeah, now that I'm warmed up, everything sounds way better. I really do like this horn. <laughs> Thank you. 
guys, all right? Same thing. <laughs> That's a difference in sound. People call it improvising. I'm not sure that's what I'm doing, but I'm just playing stuff. I hear a lot of patterns come back and forth, right? Because I just play what comes naturally. But I'm glad I can write some cool melodies for the songs that I ended up doing, though. <laughs>